The countdown has begun. The line has been drawn in the sand. The only option available to us right now is to say no to everything that Hasbro and Wizards is doing right now with the 30th anniversary packs. What is the price of their greed? It's time to make them pay. It's time to stand together and do something about it. And this is that opportunity. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. Welcome aboard to all the new subscribers helping my channel grow closer to that 15,000 subscriber mark. And of course my regular viewers who tune in each and every day. To my Patreon members, to my YouTube membership members guys, this is one of those journeys we're never going to forget. Before the announcement, of the 30th anniversary booster packs. Those packs are $999 for four packs, randomized, plus tax, plus shipping. Before that happened, the decision was made at some point to make them, to create them. And I wondered how that came about. I, I was curious. You know, anyone who wants to move up in a company, they have to find a way to separate themselves from the pack to look better than they are. To be the person that stands and says, hey, look at me. I'm the guy you want. How do you do that at a company like Hasbro? How does Chris Cox get noticed? How, do, how does he step forward out of the light and say, I'm your guy. I'm the guy that's going to make money for the company. He comes up with a crazy idea. He says, hey, if we do this, if my idea works, we're going to make a bucket load of money for the company. And if anything, when more promotions come along, I'm going to be first in line. And by the way, he is CEO of Hasbro now. He did get up and hired in the company. And it's probably because of the profit margins he managed to appropriate from the player base of Magic the Gathering, those price sensitive people out there. That's how he probably got the promotion. I don't know for sure, but it sounds good. And when this idea was being formulated, when he was thinking about it, and they're at the round table in the ivory tower of Wizards of the Coast. He probably called Cynthia. She's the new CEO right now, by the way, of Wizards. Talked to her and said, hey, Cynthia, what do you think about this? You're a strategic person. How does this work? Is this, is this something we can, we can do? Is this going to work out? Then they probably called Eugene Evans. He's like a VP there. They said, hey, Eugene, what, you're the corporate strategy guy. How is this going to play out if it works well with these packs? Around the 30th anniversary, we're going to have a lot of heightened magic, levity. Everyone's going to be loving the game. We're going to have this 30th anniversary stuff, and we think we can sneak this in. We can put these packs in there. It's going to drive people insane. It's going to make a lot of money, right? And you know what? Eugene probably took a look at it. Makes sense. And then he probably called in Bill Rose. He's a VP there of R&D. Of how it's going to look. How's it going to look? We're going to take out these cards, do some new artwork. We're going to put on this, and this is the price we think we can charge. What do you guys think? All right. Maybe they even went to Aaron Forsyth. I know he's saying they did, but maybe they did. Maybe they went to him. But their last stop, you know who that would be? They go to legal. They go to Nick Mitchell. He's their VP of legal, and that would be the last stop, probably saying, "Hey, if we..." break the reserve list this way and put proxies out there. Like, how is that going to look? The spirit of the reserve list, we know, we know. We'll put that aside. Price sensitivity, people. We'll put it aside over here. How is that going to look? That's what we want to know, Nick. And Nick probably went to his actuaries and the people in legal and said, we can probably get away with this. There'll be some blowback, a little bit of flack, but we think we can do it. And then, at the time, Chris probably brought the idea forward to Hasbro and how they're going to make more money. Because, you know, he's already making extra money from what we've already been giving him. And he says, I think we can do this too. I think we can slip this in. And that was their critical mistake. That was the point that the pebble became a bigger pebble, a bigger pebble, a small rock, a bigger rock, and it started rolling down the mountain, gathering steam, gathering size of mass. Because when the announcement hit all the players, for about two seconds, a lot of players were excited. They really were, until the price tag was added to it. And not only did anger and frustration come about, but they basically waked a sleeping giant of players. Who some were already mad at Wizards for various reasons, and now it is a culmination of hate, anger, frustration, disappointment, wherever you fall on the spectrum. And it's all at Wizards of the Coast. It's all at Hasbro. It's all at Chris Cox. 
He made money off us for years, which probably allowed him to get promotions within the company. And he thought he could push us a little bit further. Well, this is that point. In our history as Magic players, as lovers of the game who enjoy doing this, that we have to stand up and say no. No to this decision entirely. Because if we don't say no to it, if we let this idea go unanswered, you're just opening another level of a video game. One we've never entered before. You thought collector boxes were expensive? Then double flip trip masters was okay? Imagine where it will go after this. It's just another level of a game that gets that much more pricey to play at. Some people don't care. I get that. But it go, it's just going to get worse and worse. It doesn't stop there is the problem. There is no end level. Because they have to keep making profits. They have to keep pushing the agenda forward. And Chris wants to keep his job. And Samantha wants to keep her job. They want to keep the money they're making. So they have to keep that pebble rolling. And it's got to get bigger and bigger and make them more money. But the other side of that pebble is us, the player mass, saying no. And we need to step up and say no now. No to those decisions that they've made. That we're not going to buy it. We're not going to buy into that idea that it's even valued at that because i'll be honest the initial idea didn't bother me i thought the idea of a 36 pack box for maybe a couple hundred bucks that they could be drafting at stores and allowing players to experience that old school style of play it really didn't bother me it didn't bother a lot of you it's the price the arrogance to think they could pull it off and that we'd be okay with it that the players would just say, yeah, it's okay, we don't mind. We're not price sensitive, we're fine. You can just go ahead and do it. And that's where they made the mistake, the miscalculation. And I know, we all know that they know what's going on at this point. Bank of America slapped you in the face. How'd, they, how'd you like that, Hasbro? Double downgrade, it feel good? 15% of your company is made up from wizards. But 35% of your profits are? It's kind of a messed up number, right? Maybe you should try diversifying more and not just do board games and stuff. Because after you buy a board game, you own it for a long time. You got to figure it out. But not on our backs as players. This is the time to say no. To step up as a wall of players and say, we're not going to buy it. We're going to step away. We're not going to buy anything from you. Until number one, they stop doing stuff like this. Scratch it. Say it's not going to happen again. Give us something in legal writing. That's what I would like to see. I know I probably won't, but that's what I would like to see. I want assurances, and so do a lot of you out there. We know there's a lot of content going around YouTube right now saying don't buy it. I know I already told people I'm not going to open any packs on the channel. Not a chance. I can't buy into that. And I won't watch any box openings, pack openings. I won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Because I just, I can't get behind it. I can't believe in something like that. I think they've pushed things too far. It's supposed to be a celebration, not a death march. We're supposed to be able to enjoy the game. It's the 30th anniversary. Not the Armageddon that you've now wrought upon us. And we are mad about it. And we're not really forgetting. But this is the chance for players to either step up, say no, and not buy any of it. Don't go near it. <clears throat> pardon me don't touch it stay away from it don't promote it this is your chance because if you don't and you do buy some then you're saying it's okay you're saying it's okay for more products like this more proxies you're saying okay to such a high level high priced style of game that it's going to make the proxy market flourish it's going to kill local lgs to the point they don't exist anymore and eventually the game will probably end up just going digital because we have nobody left to play with, nowhere to meet other players. You ever notice your playgroup gets smaller over the years because you can't find new players to bring in, to bring new experiences? It happens. My playgroup started with like 18 people. We're down to like six. Four now because two dropped out of the game and said they're not playing anymore because of this decision. They liquidated their collections. They made their choice. This is something that we actually can stand together as a community of price sensitive players and say no just say no put that in my comment section a tagline that says 
say no to M30 packs. How about that? I usually kind of save those little comments and stuff for the end of the video, but I just felt it has to be said again to remind people to keep the word going because every day is a day closer to the release date of these things being sold. And I really hope it just crashes to the ground and burns. I really hope it does. I saw that sale that was up for like some of the cards array, like the mocks and stuff. Gibberish. It can't be priced that way. Because that would mean that old unlimited cards are worth so much more than they already are. And that already seems like a very expensive price tag. If they've made it cheap and affordable for everyone, this would be a different conversation. It really would. I'd be promoting it. I'd be excited. I'd be recommending it. And instead I can't. Because it's ripping you up. It's ripping the players off. It's ripping you guys off at home. It's insulting your intelligence. Can't do it. Not going to do it. Whether you like my content or hate it. Whether you like me or hate me doesn't really matter in this case. What matters is you say no to it and don't buy it. Just the way it has to be. Because if it isn't, things are going to change pretty rapidly in the next couple of years if it goes through the floodgates unanswered. So we'll deal with that if we come to it. Thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me on the channel. Remember, it's a great game. And the good news is you don't have to buy another card from what you already own, and you'll always be able to enjoy this game. But we can't let this kind of stuff go by. I think Nick at Legal should have given them different advice. And Cynthia, who got that promotion after Chris got advanced to CEO, maybe she should have spoke up. She has a lot of experience. Makes you wonder, right, guys? Thanks again for tuning in. So much for stepping out of the crowd and trying to get that job, huh, Chris? Because now you have to pay the piper. Bad decisions, greediness, somebody's got to pay for it. Thanks again, guys. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. And of course, a big shout out goes out to all the fantastic patrons on the channel. Without their support, videos would not be happening. Thank you again to every single one of you. You're amazing. That rant took a lot out of me. I know. Not using my style, is it? Welcome back to the end of the video. Thanks again for hanging out with me, guys. Yes, I have the coffee here. I'm totally chilling like a villain, dreaming about nachos and wondering what's going to happen, just like you guys are. How is it all going to... How's this story going to end? I feel like we're in a choose your own adventure from the 1980s. I'm stuck on between pages 81 and 84. I don't know which one to take because I don't know what's going to happen. I know what I want to have the end result. One of those doors leads one way, one leads the other. The line is in the sand and I have no idea how it's going to pan out. But you know what? It's a hell of a journey. I can't wait to see how the story ends anyway, even if it comes up badly. Thanks again for being here, guys. Thank you again for everyone who helps out. Because you know what? Without you guys, um, it'd be a little more difficult than you guys actually realize. So thanks again for being supporters. See you guys soon.